Welcome back to uh, part number three of my custom Lego train layout. Uh, in the, this last part, we're going to examine my rolling stock, all of my, my cars. And in part two, we looked at my locomotives. And uh, in part one, we took a, an overall look at uh, my whole layout. So I'll throw up some uh, links to those, so be sure and check those out. But specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, each one of these. I noticed they're all rather dusty and this works great this and a little dust buster and or a Swiffer duster but enough of that so we're gonna go in uh, I think build order so my first ones were these my little tank cars um, I don't know I, I came up with the inspiration from a, an N scale tank car that said hooker on the side and it was the same color, and it attracted me as an adolescent at age 9 or 10, and it uh, appealed to me again, but I left the decals off. So this is a very simple build. It's just this with a couple of plates and trucks on the bottom. This is a very simple build with some ladders. And they go together like uh, the regular Lego made a set. I forget which one it is. They had a, a tank car in it. Anyway, very similar build construction, and uh, one commonality that it has is almost all of my trucks look and work this way. It's a simple 2x2 two two turntable, a couple of tiles to smooth it out and make it look nice, and this right down in there, so there's uh, really not much to it. Very simple. And then there's just a single 1x6 in there holding it all together, a couple of plates to bring it up, so... Very, very simple construction. All of mine are the same from car to car to car. I don't uh, don't complicate it. I don't vary from it very much. This design essentially is the same design you're going to find in uh, you know cars like this, but I just add the stairs onto the front. It's going to be the same design that you're going to find really on the rest of the rolling stock, um, including that turntable. It's featured on every single one that I have. It works out really well. Um, some people mess with pins, some people do other things. I like this. Because really none of my stuff is on the regular Lego chassis, so the the regular pin connector that comes with it, and again, I don't have one anymore, uh, doesn't work unless you use the, the custom Lego chassis, uh, like I mentioned in my other video about my CSX engine. And none of my custom stuff is, is built on that generic Lego train chassis, so I had to come up with some alternatives. Uh, on most of my builds, the tanker included here, I, I really kind of keep my detail to sort of a minimum, you know, get the ladder in the right place, make the tank on top look good, there'll be a couple of side support structures, there'll be some walkways, and there'll be some trucks underneath, and that's a great representation of a tanker. Nobody says, what's that? And that's a tanker. And that's my goal when I build all of my, uh, all, all of my rolling stock, is, is I, I want it to look like something that, uh, somebody recognizes easily because not everybody that I know and everybody in my family is a, a huge Lego fan nor a train fan but you know to the casual observer I want it to be uh, pretty obvious what they're looking at. I built these in threes with the intention of buying or building all three and selling two of them to recoup my cost on this one and that idea immediately went out the window and thus began my theme of of making threes of, of everything. Uh, another reason for threes of everything is that three plus an engine fits pretty well on most of my tight little sidings. Uh, you start getting too many cars and uh, it just becomes a little bit more difficult to manage. So three it is for a lot of these others. Uh, so after my tank car, I went and decided to build a, a hopper car. And these hopper cars, I also, based upon some hopper cars that uh, I had as a kid. And uh, if I don't break those out in a minute, I'll, uh, I'll throw up a picture here so we can see what we're talking about. So these are just small, essentially I think they're supposed to be like a 40 ton hopper car, which they're not, they're a little bit oversized. Um, but I wanted to go for the right scale and the right dimension. Uh, again, with these, I was really trying to uh, just achieve some reasonable detail and reasonable accuracy. You know, oh look, slope sides, it looks like a hopper. Oh, little hopper things at the bottom, that makes sense. The, the real one has a ladder. Uh, the real one does not have a brake handle right there. But again, that's another theme that I went with 
for most of my rolling stock is I stuck a brake handle on the end of, I think, almost everything. For some of them they're correct, for some of them they're not. I like the splash of color, I like the little bit added extra detail. Whether it's perfectly correct or not, I don't care. So, here again, same concept for, actually, probably uh, identical to what you just saw on the bottom of the hopper. And every now and then I'll, you know, move the, move the turntable front or back, depending upon clearances and whatnot, but they all work the same way, and you can see they're really easy to fish back on. Now, unlike the case of my tank cars you just saw, those were built in that color because that's pretty much the only color that those cylinder pieces were available in at a reasonable price besides maybe black and white, and I didn't want that. In fact, I really wanted that same color as those, those dark orange hooker tank cars. Um, same concept for these. So I picked these colors specifically because the parts that I chose to build these out of are most affordable in these three colors. It's probably doable in black and, and white, and it might even be doable in red. But once you start getting into colors like blue and, and maybe even red and certainly any sand colors, um, greens too, uh, the, the cost of the parts for these just goes through the roof. You know, most of my rolling stock, if I had to throw an average on it, each car probably averages out to, I don't know, $40, maybe $50, who knows, per, per car. And then by the time you put it in just the correct green color that you wish you could get it in, it becomes a $207 car with, you know, three orders from Europe on BrickLink, which is just crazy. So uh, I did try and stay cost conscientious with all of these, and, and I didn't order up anything exotic. Uh, there are, though, several pieces throughout each of these that does come from overseas because it's only available that way. But, you know, if you're going to build mocks and do custom stuff and use BrickLink brick link or whatnot, then you've got to get used to uh, those overseas orders, and they all go just fine. So I've got, uh, again, three of these. Oh, I did put some additional detail into, uh, into each one. And specifically, the, uh, the coal comes out. Uh, sometimes it just gets a little tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to edit this out. If you watch my other video, I spent an hour trying to turn off one of my trains. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, here we go. So coal comes right on out. Just real simple construction there. I threw a few grays in there just for variety. Um, but then if we look in the car itself, I, I kept it nice and slope. Nice nice uniform slope going down the inside, trying to keep it like it should line up on the outside. Uh, I got a little high spot in the middle like it should be. And then, you know, there's your little grates or your drains or whatever where it comes on out. And, you know, this does line up perfectly with the with the grates that are right there. So I did try and pay attention to uh, some of those details there as well. And so this car runs around just fine with its, uh, whether it's empty or, uh, or whether, uh, whether it's full. And then that just snaps right back in like that quite easy. So I think that's it for my hopper cars. So I'm gonna address these magnets. Every now and then you get some weak ones and if you just lift them, you'll hear them click. Did you hear that snap? That was the magnet spinning around and the poles lining up the right way. So if you've got a couple of weak magnets, just go vertically like that. And now watch. See? See how that solved that? So off you go. So after my uh, hopper cars, I think I had then built my, my steam loco by then, so I'm pretty sure that uh, my old-time western vintage stuff was, was next. So the, uh, the steam loco, um, the uh, American 440 was probably built in the late... Uh, 1800s and served uh, in duty until about 1950 something whatever uh, so these cars would have spanned you know potentially a, an era of, of many many decades so these are maybe more closely period correct for the 40s and, and 30s 40s and 50s in the in the US and so that's kind of what I modeled them off of uh, a, a little bit I took some liberties with the coloring but I definitely wanted to get that that look of that kind of old western US um, uh, cars here. So we've got a traditional uh, carriage. Uh, maybe it's a first class or maybe it's coach. It doesn't really much matter. And the next one we have here is a, a combination car. Let's bring that up front here. So that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a combination of passenger and uh, 
and, and baggage. So, uh, you know, this would be a baggage area. And generally the, the loco would be up here with the, the baggage area kind of buffering from the rest of the passenger area. Or maybe it got flipped around. It doesn't matter. So we've got your loco up here. And we've got a little bit of a baggage area. Or may, maybe pretend it's a, a mail car or something along that. Then you got a little bit of passenger area here. Maybe this could be baggage and this could be coach. And then maybe this is, is first class or sleeper or something like that. So, and you move on down to your uh, down to your caboose here as well. So, uh, the caboose, since we're on it, um, I did go ahead and it's it's pretty much uh, uh, has a full interior. And I know I have a picture of that, and I'll, I'll link up. But if we spin it around, we can pull one side off and kind of see or even play on the inside of it. It was kind of a fun little build that way. Uh, and then here again, I've I've got a break. Uh, I've got a brake handle on this, and I've got a brake handle here on this one. Um, and these really, I tried to just make uh, pretty simple. Again, same uh, same technique here for the trucks. Just added a stair on the end, and you know, made each of the pieces a little bit longer. Always get them to line up with their uh, the platform. That's key. Some type of decoration on the end. Clear lights up top. Um, also, all of my cars have some sort of undercarriage detail. Not always correct, sometimes mimicking what it should look like, sometimes just giving a, a vague general impression. Most of the things under these carriages or cars that you're going to see would have been, I'm guessing, airlines for, for the brakes and, and perhaps, I don't know, maybe some other type of service line, maybe a steam line or an electric line or a pneumatic line that I don't know enough about. So anyway, just a little bit of undercarriage detail. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure that my top comes off on each of these because I did put a, uh, I did put a bit of an interior on each one. Yeah, we're going to say I did, but I'm not going to mess with that. So these three were my next. They were they were a lot of fun. I uh, I enjoyed doing those, and I think they pair nicely with my uh, with my Steam logo. Up next after that comes a, a kind of a big project, and this was my this was my well cars, and they call them uh, you, you might call them a container car, but a well car I think is the the right name for them uh, because they they have a well. Your stuff sets down inside of it like a like a well, so hence a, a, a well car. And of course, these are you know, shipping containers. That's what I've designed these to uh, to look and to be is shipping containers. Uh, they come off pretty easily right here. They separate with no no difficulty at all. And then they do uh, line up with my uh, with my truck over here, which I guess I'm going to grab and and bring in the screen. There we go. So the uh, shipping containers just set here. I'll give you a close up of this. So I just made a nice little semi, kind of designed it myself. Probably stole a few ideas from from uh, pictures I saw online, and then just wanted it nice and smooth, some decent detail, little whips that pretend to be air hoses, and of course a little chromed exhaust right there, little steps, some fuel tanks. The wheels don't turn. And then just a nice flush look here. And I wanted some uniformity between the, the, the back of the semi-truck and between the back of the trailer. I definitely wanted to make sure that those looked the same as far as lights and plates and, and mud guards. Same thing there. Nice uniform feature. I, I like the tidiness. And then on the trailer, it just drops in with the pin. And there's plenty of room for the for the landing gear to uh, to clear. And it holds it just one, one plate low. And uh, so that really works out quite nicely. Uh, I didn't mess with the fold-up mechanism because there's no need to. Uh, furthermore, on the trailer, I designed it to hold both the uh, uh, the 40-foot. Uh, this is what this is. is a 40-foot shipping container. So that locks right into place and is exactly what the real thing looks like. Pretty much down to the stripes. So that fits perfectly. And then when you have the uh, when you have the short shipping container. Let me grab one here. You know, the short shipping container, that lines up, you can see quite nicely, right there. And then that just snaps right into place. And then voila, you've got your, you've got your shipping container on the back of your semi-truck. So, I don't know, I like semi-trucks, and I like shipping containers. So I decided to, to go this route with these. So I'm going to show you my container crane later on, but for right now we'll put that back. So shipping containers are... are uh, each uh, easy to remove, 
Um, I did a couple of 20 footers. As you can see, we've got a 20 footer, 20 footer, and then we've got these are your standard 40 footers. So now, one thing you're going to notice here in a second is on each one of these, I I created a Lego sin, committed a Lego sin, and I uh, I marked on them with a sharpie. <laughs> Anyway, those are there to represent the bars that you would see on the end of every shipping container, pretty much uh, in the world. So, silver bars, silver Sharpie. Please don't thumbs down me, but it, it would come right off with a little bit of thinner, no problem at all. Or I can spin them around. I might just spin them around because I'm a little bit of a purist and that bothers me a little too much. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what, uh, what ends up uh, happening with that. So, um, another, uh, detail and challenge on this one is the, the, the length, not only the, the, the length of this whole thing, is it going to, is it going to fit on my sightings? Cause this is, this is again, probably three or four cars long and I've got it, uh, needs to be able to fit. Otherwise it's parked on a track. And then the other challenge was, um, this, is, this is 40, this is a TTX well car, 40 footer. Uh, and then here, if you look carefully, it says 125 tons. And then there's a uh, serial number there, 125 tons. Mm. When these are in flights of three, so one, two, three, that's technically correct, but the length of these should really be 53 footers. So if you see three of them together, they're 53 footers. If you see, if they're 40 footers, there would actually be five of these together. So, yeah, one more, and then one more, and now it's just getting a little too long for me. And expensive. I, this is, these containers are not cheap to build. I mean, they're, they're probably almost, they're, they're probably 10 to $15 maybe even $20 each. And then if you get the wrong color, like if you want blue or green, they're like a hundred bucks. It's just silly. Um, now there's lots of other ways to build shipping containers. Mine's not the only way. It's not the right way. But the way I did is I used the, the one by one fives, uh, and I just turned them on there. I just tipped them a little bit. Let's see if we can focus in there. See that right there? Just a couple of degree tilt all the way along which follows around the next corner and the next corner and then you end up with that nice core and look you know what those handles don't look that bad come on be honest it looks decent you get that nice corrugated look so unfortunately if you pick the wrong color these get pricey even if you pick the right color uh they're pricey now yeah i think you can build white and i think you can build gray all day long for like i don't know five or ten dollars each but if you want some fun colors, then it's gonna gonna cost you a little bit more. So, um, so where was I? So three cars versus this really should actually be five long. I may change that someday. I may not. I used a different printing technique as opposed to my some of my engines I discussed in another video. This is essentially clear window cling decal. You know, like that hard plastic stuff that you could write your oil change date on and stick it up. Not the soft stuff, but the hard stuff. That's what this is. And uh, again, printed it out of my inkjet printer. And honestly, I didn't expect it to last. I, you know, I'm not going to do it because these have stuck nicely, but these are cling removable stickers. I, sh I can just peel this off and restick it in a different spot if I wanted to with no ill effects. Uh, they've been on there quite a while and they've held up great. I'm just going to leave them alone. If they ever did peel or flake or fail, then I would go with the same print method that I used on my uh, Union Pacific back there, which is to use testers decal sheets, but you'll have to, you'll have to watch my, uh, my video on the engine for more detail on that. So, um, down to the nitty gritty on these, I, I, I had to balance the, the height, how far it's supposed to set in the well versus how high it is compared to, um, uh, you know, bridges and in real life. And then when I put my BNSF engine right next to it, it lines up right here, which looks nice and scale. Uh, I wanted to make all these catwalks look good. I wanted to make all these clamps look good. Again, I, I tried to capture some realism here. I might throw up a picture of what I had to work with. I, I tried to do good there. Um, again, brake handle may be present on these, so that, that might be sort of legit. Um, one of the challenges was how to actually get this car built, and so really it is 
uh, it, it's all plates. There's not any techni Technic parts in there. And it's just a sideways build here, and this little side, actually, there you go, don't fail me now, this little side just uh, kind of comes right off like that. So it's it's pretty easy, pretty simple, and it was, it was pretty fun. And the uh, the extra tiny gap that I get here on the bottom, watch this. This just this worked out coincidentally. Did not know. Did, you can't plan for this. So because there's a, a Technic pin, because the Technic pins have a little lip there, there's what a thirty second or sixty fourth of an inch of space, which is great because you recall when I go back to my shipping containers, they also protrude, you know, a little bit. So that extra width really helps with seating those in there. It just it, it worked out pretty perfectly. So. Got a nice basic frame there, same truck from all my other trains, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Plus, this is really the most compact truck you can get. Plus, I admire the builders who build these out and find in intricate details and have 300 pieces in their trucks. But when you crash your stuff as much as I do and play with it and take it to as many shows as I do, I, I can't, it would be like every v every uh, every car being like my locomotive, where, where every time you look at it wrong, it falls apart. I don't want that in my rolling stock. My stuff is robust. It's not going to come apart. I, like I said, I transport it and take it to train shows all the time. Um... The cars fit, the, excuse me, the containers fit in there pretty easily. Uh, sometimes that happens, but what are you going to do? Um, and here's to kind of demonstrate its robustness. Look at this. Holding it by the side, those frail little side frames are not, look at that. Those containers are not ripping this car apart. It's, but yet, look how easily they slide out. I'm, I'm kind of happy with how these, these came out. Uh, and then for coupling and whatnot, again, I've got a nice flat area. And again, same turntable I use on, on everything, except this one's kind of a, uh, this one's just a double header. And uh, it's kind of surprisingly easy once you practice to, uh, to line these up. You just get the other set of uh, wheels on the back, line it up, and just envision where it goes. Hold on. I've never done this on camera before. There it goes. Okay. And same with the next one. Mm hmm. Voila. Excellent. So, again, these were a lot of fun. A little bit more expensive. And, you know, honestly, that's, a, that's the main reason I haven't bumped this up to five. It's going to cost me another hundred plus dollars, 110, 120 bucks to buy the bricks off BrickLink to make this thing just too longer. And I'm going to spend it on other cars. I have other cars in the, in, in the works that I've not built yet that I do plan to, uh, to build someday. So that leaves, that leaves my box cars. So I'll be honest, my box cars I kind of put off for a while. I designed them quite a little while ago, but I had some limited choices again because of colors and expense. I think these cars averaged thirty-five to forty-five dollars each or so. But there again, if you get the wrong color, if you want it in blue, I don't know, it's 150 bucks or something silly like that. So, again, it's because of my choice of bricks. Um, very particular. These are the these are your one by two um, by five uh, bricks with the with the modif pardon me modified with the the groove in the side. Uh, and then same with these rail pieces. These rail pieces that hold the door are available in a finite number of colors. And, and size configuration. Same with the doors themselves. The doors are only available in a couple of colors. And by the time you find just the right door, color, car combination, add it all up, you're like $300. And it's uh, it's quite a shocker. So it's back to the drawing board, and then you make a compromise, and you decide, i got to do black ladders for everything because you know the dark gray ladders aren't available, or the white's not available, or that's too expensive. Uh, the doors are only available in a few colors, the rails. Um, these sorts of pieces so honestly i think this was a compromising colors but i'm okay because i don't have a lot of other white red or dark gray so uh on, on my layout as far as rolling stock so i was okay with that i definitely uh you know as a nod to lego and the simplicity of some of their designs i didn't want to go with a fancy brick built door that may or may not open like you'll see on a lot of the real high quality custom mocks out there i wanted something that, that screamed lego screamed kids screamed functionality and is just uh, you know easy to play with. So same same design for my truck. Um, again, like I do on a lot of my other designs, I wanted to go for some you know at least minimal exterior detailing. So some basic wires or cables underneath, a uh, basic ladder, your basic catwalk across the top. 
uh, a handbrake that is there on the uh, caboose, excuse me, on the uh, box car that I modeled that off of, complete with a little platform for the for the guy to stand on. Um, so these were a lot of fun. Uh, I again I put them off building them initially because my dollars went elsewhere and uh, they were a little more than I wanted to spend on kind of just a simple basic box car. Uh, of note, as I run these around the tracks, the doors all have a chain, all rattle themselves open, which no matter which way I run it, they all rattle open, which works out fine. So that's how it usually ends up going around the, uh, going around the layout. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at each one of these, my harbor cars, my box cars, my well cars, my old time cars, and my tanker cars have gotten away from me. So, um, next up, let's take a look. Get you off my tripod, gonna quick. I made mention of my my truck already, and I also made a uh, container crane over here. So the idea here obviously is you can move it right on over. The train comes and backs on in, and then we can uh, lower the container up and down. And of course, the whole whole thing, the whole thing rolls as uh, as needed. So that was just a fun little project. I've got a little operator in there. I think he has a smile. Yep, there you go. He's got a smirk because he's getting paid big bucks to do nothing at this moment. So um, anyhow. Hope that you enjoyed. If you've seen anything on the layout that uh, wasn't covered in uh, in video one, two, or now video three, just uh, holler out in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to uh, share and answer any questions. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and uh, like and uh, subscribe as well. Thanks.